Hi, I'm Zoe Minzenberger, co-founder of The Dig Chicago. We are a nonprofit art studio focusing in ceramics, located in the West Town neighborhood. Today, we are talking about beginner throwing and my favorite practices for making pots on the wheel. Before we get on the wheel, we have to address wedging. Wedging is a crucial part of any clay-based activity. The purpose of wedging is to compress the material to limit impurities such as air bubbles. This makes any project easier and the material more reliable. Compression is an important aspect of throwing that is relevant in multiple steps of the process. The main motions of wedging include pressing the bulk of the clay into the table, then repositioning the piece towards yourself in preparation to repeat. Motions you want to avoid include smearing the top portion of the clay too far into the table. Think about the table as a tool as much as your hands are. You are using the table to press material into your hands, and you are using your hands to press material into the table, therefore compressing the material into itself, removing impurities, and creating a single piece of clay to work with. One method for wedging is called the ram's head. This can be done by firmly pressing the center of the clay into the table, then lifting the clay upward towards you and repeating. After a while, you will notice that your clay will start to take the shape of a ram's head, hence the name. Another wedging method is called the spiral method. This is a slightly more complicated motion, but I find it to be the best when preparing to throw. This press and pull motion is similar to the first method, but with a slight counterclockwise rotation. No matter your method, you'll want to repeat this wedging motion 30 to 50 times, ending with a relatively symmetrical piece in preparation for centering. Now it's time to prepare your tools. I recommend a wooden rib, a few angled tools, a metal rib, a needle tool, sponges, and a wire cutter. You will also need a bucket of water to use throughout. We begin by slapping down the clay into the center of the wheel. Here is where I recommend time to play with the pedal. Test how fast it goes. When working, you probably won't need to go much faster than halfway, so get it out of your system now. Also, be careful when playing with the pedal if you do have clay on it. <laughs> Next, it's important to recognize the strongest parts of your hands. Think about the flattest and sturdiest parts. This will be at the base of your palm, as well as the side of your hands. These parts of your hands are crucial for proper centering. Your palms are not your friend. Centering essentially compresses the clay into itself, into a symmetrical lump, both visually and into its core. I begin with adding water. My left hand is supporting the sides, while my right hand is compressing downward. I start with more pressure downward than outward. This ensures that the clay will properly suction to the wheel head. Once I'm comfortable with this suction, I begin to add pressure from the side, creating a hockey puck type shape. Centering and compressing takes core power. The best way to activate your core when centering is to utilize your body strength. This looks like nesting your elbows into your hips and moving as a unit. Even the best arm wrestler would be slapped around by uncentered moving clay. It's best to utilize your full strength leaning into the clay. Thinking of the wheel head as a moving unit, you really only should be applying pressure to one point on the side and supporting this pressure from the top. Play with the shape of your clay. Try adding and relieving pressure from side to top, top to side. If you apply pressure to one area, the material has no option but to move. This is where the second hand can lead the way for the material to take the shape that you envision. Our hands should always be in cahoots with one another. If one hand added pressure, the other should acknowledge it and catch the affected material. This removes impurities and better compresses your material. A great practice when throwing is to keep your hands and your wheel head clean, periodically wiping away excess slip. Once you feel more comfortable trading the dominant pressure between hands, you can begin to play around with different hand shapes that affect the material. One is lifting to make a very tall and skinny mound. This brings your hands closer to the center of the clay, addressing any impurities deep within. When the material appears and feels symmetrical, you can begin to open her up. Let's take a look at a cross-section diagram of the steps when opening. The first image represents the perfectly centered hockey puck. When you begin to open, you apply the pressure from the center down until you're about a half inch to a quarter of an inch from the wheel head. The fourth image shows an opening with a widened base. This is done by simply curving the finger outward a bit after you've reached appropriate depth. 
A needle tool is very helpful for checking the depth of the base. Begin by stopping your wheel and insert the needle into the base. Place your finger where the needle meets the clay. To reiterate, a half of an inch to a quarter inch is appropriate, depending on trimming plans. Back to noting on compression, it is important that this is done throughout your throwing session. Think about the walls, and think about the base. A soft sponge is a great way to apply even amounts of pressure on larger surface areas. Compression reduces the risk of cracking and can continue our centering practices outside of the hockey puck stage. Now we are ready to raise the walls. There are a few concepts to understand before we get started, but these concepts are just reiterated from centering. First, let's take a look at the strongest part of our fingers. Similar to the flatness of our hands, the sides of your index fingers and the tips of your fingers are the most stable. The second concept is that if we apply pressure somewhere, the material must move in reaction to said pressure. Here, the pressure is coming from a pinching motion from the strongest parts of our fingers. The third concept is that the hands always support one another. If pressure is applied on the outside by one hand, the second is there to catch it from the inside, stopping the clay from moving inward. To reference the second concept, the clay now has only one direction it is able to go, up. We slowly raise this pinching pressure up with each rotation of the wheel, never stopping halfway through. Be sure to complete this motion all the way to the rim. I recommend getting used to understanding space in between your fingers. Try this with your splash pan. Put your hands on either side of the plastic and try to visualize the width of the plastic by feel. This is a useful skill when raising walls. Your goal is to create even walls from bottom to top. Your outside hand should always be applying more inward pressure than your inside hand outward. If you visualize a cone shape, this will encourage a straighter cylinder. A metaphor I dig that helps me is imagining you're on a bicycle. If you look far to your left, then back forward, you notice that you've probably unintentionally reared left. Think of this when throwing. Your focus should always be to the center of the piece to avoid overly opening the vessel. If your goal is a bowl shape, which is commonly a wider rim, save the outward pressure until an even cylinder is formed. You can always make wider, but taking back a widening motion is not as forgiving. That should be your last step. A note on using tools. The angled tools can be used to remove excess material from your base. The wooden rib can be used as a straight edge to reinforce your walls. The metal rib can remove excess slip and create a smooth texture. The needle tool can be used to remove mistakes from the rim. This is helpful if you find impurities or non-clay material in your pot. Start by slowly inserting the needle tool into the point of desired height. Be very steady. I recommend your core. Once the tool is all the way through, quickly lift your arms. Now that we have a nice cylinder, we can play with shape. Alternate the shape of the pinch and the inner outer pressure. 